I'm gonna be honest, I don't even know what to do now after that. <laughs> Far out. I look I did have something um, special in, originally planned for tonight, but Pastor Chad and I have clearly been reading the same scriptures, so we won't talk about Mystery Babylon tonight. But um instead we're gonna turn to the book of Luke in chapter eight. I'll get there myself in a minute. Um, tonight I just want to talk about growing or dying. I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, now, does anyone here have a hobby that they enjoy doing? It's not a trick question, I'm just really curious. There's a few people that have hobbies um, and stuff I like doing and for a lot of years I've struggled to find a hobby, struggled to find something that, you know, that I could enjoy doing that would allow me to take my mind off things, to... Um, sort of, you know, put life to one side and, and just uh, sort of download my own thoughts or just sort of spend some idle time by myself. And um, I wouldn't mind, uh, I guess, for myself, like, I've become to enjoy gardening. And I don't know, I don't know if there are many other gardeners out there. I mean, I'm a poor man's gardener. I'm no Don Burke for the older amongst us or a Jamie Drury or you will never see me on Backyard Blitz or anything like that. But I've come to really enjoy the, um, the peace and the tranquility that comes with going and doing some gardening. Um, I've loved sort of establishing something from nothing, tending to the, you know, the dirt, getting the soil good and all of that sort of stuff. Um, you know, learning what to plant, when to plant it, you know, putting the watering systems and everything together, and then being able to sit back and, and see things grow. You know, I've, I've really taken quite a joy in that, and it's been good that I've, a couple of my kids, I've, I've seen when they were younger, um, I had all bricks and dirt in my garden, and I'd have them on wheelbarrows before they knew any better, and their little toy plastic cars with trailers, and they'd be loading it up with rocks and and bricks and all the stuff you don't want in the garden. I'd see them, you know, taking it to the trailer and doing all, all the, you know, all the manual labour for me. And, 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 you know, it's sort of as the garden's gotten better, it's great to be able to spend some time with particularly one of my children who uh, enjoys coming out there as well. Um, and I guess look, you might not be a gardener. That might not resonate with anyone here at all. But I'm sure we've all got something we like doing and that we take pride in that we like, to spend our, we like to spend our time growing and developing our skills. Um, and maybe think on that. If gardening's not for you, think on, think on the thing that is that you, you've liked to do over time, whether that's music or sport or learning, um, study for those that just can't stop studying. But it could be, it could be anything. It could be anything, really. And... I guess for me, gardening, you know, was, the Bible has so many different references and, and things relating to horticulture, relating to you know, the growing of, of fruit, you know, the trees and, and all of that sort of stuff. Um, and, and one of my favourite parables is in, is in Luke 8 that we'll, that we'll go through tonight. But um, I just wanted to uh, go through a couple of quotes, really, um, before, before we turn to the Scriptures. Um, and Michelle will, will know that this one sums me up to a T, that there are, there are no gardening mistakes, only experiments. Then there's a weed is a plant that has mastered every survival skill except for learning how to grow in rows. Society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they will never sit in. More grows in the garden than the gardener sows. All the flowers of tomorrow are in the seeds of today. You know, I failed in my first couple of gardens. I had no idea what I was doing. I'd, I'd, go, to the, I'd go to the shops, I'd buy all the plants, I'd uh, you know, get the weed mat, all the, all the gardening stuff that you need, and I'd, I'd spend the day out there, I'd dig holes, I'd put weed mat down, watering systems, um, you know, bark chips. It looked great. But when you're doing this, at, you know, just before, just before the, the heat waves of summer, you can't expect good results. You know, or when you're doing it and you, you, know, you think, oh, yeah, I'll water, it for a little, I'll water it for a little while. And then, you know, maybe something comes up for a few days when something's in its infancy. You can't expect it to then survive. 
So what I've, what I've learned, I've learned through killing everything in my garden. You know, that, that growing or dying piece, I became quite skilled at the art of killing things in the garden before we even got started. And we're just going to read this parable in, in Luke um, 8, start in verse 4. We'll read it in totality, um, and then we'll sort of come back to a few things. We just read here that, And when much people were gathered together, and where came to him out of every city, he, and this is being Jesus, spake by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside as it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell upon thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. The other fell, up, fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that has ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And, and this, he, again being Jesus, um, said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables that seeing they might not see and hearing they might not understand. So Jesus, even now saying to these people, you know, to the believers, to the apostles, you know, to the apostles and whatnot, that you know, it's, un it's up to you to know the, the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the, un but to the, un the unbelievers or the unlearned here, you know, we'll, we'll, speak in, we'll speak in mystery. Now the parable, and he goes on to explain it, because obviously the disciples didn't quite get what he was saying. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God, but those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, for which for a while believe, and in a time of temptation fall away. And they which fall upon among thorns are they, which when they have heard go forth and are choked with the cares and the riches and the pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart having heard the word keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. You know, um, when, um, so I killed a couple of gardens early on and um, Michelle was very hesitant to let me you know, keep trying because I, I clearly was spending money and there was no reward whatsoever. Um, but we moved into our new house a few years ago and um, during COVID, you know, you're looking for things to do and you know, a lot of lockdowns. So I, um, I actually got some advice on how, to, on how to grow a garden. I got some advice on the things that I should do and the things clearly that I should not do. And, and part of that was, you know, we spent time, you know, working on the ground, we spent time looking at the type of plants that would grow the right time of year and, and all, of this, all of this stuff. So I let my kids pick a plant each. It seemed like the right thing to do. If I wanted them to help, they could be invested in something. And they all look really good. And um, Caitlin picked this one, this one plant and, and for the first year, like, everything was going really well. Like this, this, this garden was planted at the right time it was looking great. I was you know, really serious about it, and you know, I still am. And and it wasn't, but this one plant didn't grow. And if anything, every time I looked at it, it looked more and more unhealthy. And I was trying. I was trying everything. I was, I was making sure I was on a good watering system. I'd always put. I was looking at the nutrients in the soil. I was trying to put everything I could to ensure that this plant would survive. And it got to the end of spring, and it still hadn't grown. And then it got to the end of summer, the leaves were withering, and it looked like it was about to fall off the perch. And um, so I cut it back to this stick, and I just thought, you know what? It's either going to die or it's going to thrive now. It's either, it's either going to grow and something's going to happen, or I'm just going to have to go and buy another one. And um, so it felt like at this point, you know, within a week, all of a sudden I went outside, and this thing had grown about two metres high. This thing had all of a sudden sprouted, sprouted branches everywhere. You know, it went from nothing being this sickly-looking thing that you know, really annoyed me every time I went out to the garden to all of a sudden it was the biggest, 
it was the best, it was the most lush thing, and all of a sudden, you know, these incredible flowers were, were blooming and, and coming off of it. And it just, it, for me, it just taught this lesson, and as we, as we consider you know, the, the parables there in, in, in Luke 8, that if you and I, if you and I can look at ourselves okay, as, a, as a soil, if you and I can look at ourselves in, in that aspect, that to have, have a seed planted inside of us, you know, yes, it, there are times where things are planted and instantly it will, it'll, take, it'll take root, it'll become connected and you'll start, to see, you'll start to see growth immediately. Or there'll be times where it takes a little while and it, there's a bit of potential there, but it's a bit of a slow burn. Or there'll be times where you just write it off. There'll be times where you just think, that's it, it's never going anywhere. But you still love it and you still care for it and all of a sudden something can happen and something can take root and just explode. And that's what happened in this situation and it's still going strong, it's still the most impressive thing in my garden, um, much, to my, much to my amazement, amazement sorry. but it came with work and, and even as we, as we see Jesus talking in, in, this, in this parable here, um, you know, part of my problem, well, I had a lot of problems with my first gardens. Was I didn't care? I didn't care for the ground. I didn't prepare it for for what was coming. So everything I put in there withered and died. And it can be like that with the Word of God in our life. If we don't take the time to prepare the soil that the Word's coming into, that we're we're going to be unable to receive it, and then you and I will wither and die. And that over time, perhaps we're we're starting to we're starting to take to take root. We're starting to to be established. But then we start to to not care not care as much as we did in the beginning. And all of a sudden, you see the weeds that spring up and start to choke the, the life out of us. Maybe it's because we're not praying, and we begin to then to wither and and to die. And if you've seen a weed take hold of a plant, it's a, it's a slow death. It's something that doesn't happen immediately, but but when it takes o- when it takes over, it's fatal to the plant. And one of one of my other kids had this plant, and in the beginning, it it sprung up. It was the most impressive thing within about a week, and it, and it continued to look bushy and bushy and bushy. Had some great looking flowers on it. You know, it, it was well it was well cared for. Uh, it was well pruned. We looked after it. You know, it had a few problems along the way with aphids and things like that but what happened and we got rid of and we got rid of them we, you know we, we saw the problem we fixed it but what happened there was a problem on the inside that we couldn't see and it developed root rot root rot and a disease in the in, in the middle of the plant that we couldn't see and over a long period of time this thing just got unhealthier and unhealthier and, and withered and died and what we can see is it's the same here that the importance that, it, that is on you and I to maintain uh, how we are before the Lord, the importance that, that, that falls on you and I to make sure that, that our soil remains fertile, to make sure that our heart remains open to the Word of God, that our lives remain open to allowing God to teach us. Because what can start off as a small problem in our lives that we're unable to overcome can be like this other plant that it flourished in the beginning. You know, it was the most impressive thing I had and I loved it. And Olivia loved it too. And the day we pulled it out, she didn't love it as much. But what happened was by the time we realised what was wrong with it, there was nothing that could be done to save it. And we can see that in our own lives, that what starts off as the smallest issue, the smallest problem in our life, can all of a sudden become the most significant thing in our life. That we can wither and, and we can die on the vine and that we need to be cut off. That we need to be pulled, we need to be pulled out and separated because we can no longer we can no longer survive in the garden. That the importance of maintaining over the long distance to ensure that you thrive and survive, to, con- con- to ensure that we continue to grow. You know, I've got one. I've got one at the moment. It's been three years and the thing hasn't flowered. It's been, it's grown and it, and you can see it every year. It grow it grows by about that that much every year and you can see that it's the you know the the uh 
the stem is hardening and hardening and hardening. It's gaining, it's a slow burn. It's gaining strength. It's gaining stability. And you know, I was at the other night, oh, maybe this is the year. This is the year it's going to flower. But sometimes for you and I, we can think we're treading water. We can think we're not growing. We can think we're not, we're not getting any better. But what we need to do is keep fronting up, you know, keep presenting ourselves forward, allowing ourselves to keep preparing ourselves before the Lord so that we go stronger and stronger and stronger so that that day that we bear fruit, or in this case, the day that this, and this, the flowers on this thing are about 30, they go to about 30 centimetres uh, all the way around. And, but the, the day that we bear fruit or the day that, or the day that things start to happen, we've got, a, we've got a solid establishment, you know, that, that, we, can, that we can withstand the fruit, that, we can, that we're able to stand firm and solid without moving once we start to bear fruit. And it's an incredible thing that when we look at, you look at things in the garden or, or whatever your hobby might be and you start to notice the skills that you've got that develop, that develop over time. You start to notice that all of a sudden, you know, step by step by step, you can do a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more and you can start to see yourself established in, in the, in the, whether it's the things of the Lord or established in, in whatever aspect of life you've you're committing yourself to you know we don't wake up you know as an apprentice you don't wake up one day you know the next day after you've started and you're a, you're a master builder it's something that takes years and years and years of perfection honing honing and developing your craft that you all of a sudden you can look back over over 30 years and you've developed this incredible this incredible breadth of knowledge and experience and everyone around you can see your capabilities everyone around you can see See, see the fruit and I guess um, we might turn over if we could to, to uh, John 15 but it needs to be the same with us personally that there's no finished product I mean, like in I mean Barb Cairns you go to her garden you go to her house her front yard is immaculate and it, it, there's nothing out of place everything's got a purpose but half the time you drive past their house during the week and she's out the front tending to it. You know, if you, if you go around to the nobles, it's not past the pool in the backyard. But Kathy's out there diligently working hard and, and, and tending to it. And it's not something that once it's established, you just leave and let go. Maybe the work's a little bit less, but you need to continue to maintain things. You need to continue to, to pull the weeds out, to, to cut the branches back. You know, to remove to remove maybe something that's dying so that so that the whole the whole bush doesn't go with it. And in John 15, verse 1, we read that I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. Now what God asks of you and I is pretty simple. You know, repenting repenting of our sins the day we get baptized or receiving the holy spirit is just the beginning you know there's this incredible there's this incredible life that he's got in store for us it doesn't just it doesn't just end there that that's just the beginning and that what he asks from there is that we go and we walk with him and that we bear fruit that we go with purpose we, we go with purpose for him and walk, and walk a life that, that he would have us to live, not what we think we should do, because quite often what we think we should do dies off and he cuts off and it's, you know, it's on the bonfire. But when we go, when we go forward in the name of the Lord and we, and we do the will of God and we see God work in our lives, that's what bears fruit. And then what's it say? He then prunes it so we can then go and do more. And, that, and that's, what we've been called, that's what we've been called to do. You know, the Word of God has so many things in it, from you know, prophetic messages to His divine promises, you know, inspiration on healing and miracles and wonders, and instruction on, on how to live our life. There's a, there's a lot in there that, that, it, that God would have us to, 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 to know, maybe not as in-depth as, as some, but to have a basic understanding of, to enhance our life with Him, to to grow that in the days where the storms come or the, uh, or the heat wave comes that we won't wither and die on the vine that 
that we'll be, we'll be rooted and firm in the ground, that, that when the weather and the storms come against us, that we, stand, that we stand firm on the word of God, that we've allowed it into our heart and we then allow it to come out of our heart and we allow it to, to, grow, to grow within us that, uh, that others would then be able to see God's promises in us. Proverbs 24, I'll just um, quote this one. Um, and I went past the field of a sluggard, past the vineyard of someone who has no sense. Thorns had come up everywhere. The ground was covered with weeds and the stone wall was in ruins. You know, the Bible talks a lot about not neglecting the promise we've been given. It warns us a lot when we read, and we can read in the Old Testament particularly, of, of God, warning, God warning Israel through his prophets, through the kings, right, of, of the, the importance of not neglecting ourselves or becoming lazy in our walk in the Lord, even as we see it in this passage. Um, and you can see, you can drive around and it doesn't matter what suburb you live in, it doesn't matter you know, how great the neighbourhood or how poor the neighbourhood you live in, but it doesn't take you long to get in your car and go for a drive and see houses that have become run down and see houses that have been neglected. And the first thing that we see is the yard. You notice that the weeds have come up and have choked the life out of anything, of anything that was perhaps good there, that the lawn's become so overgrown that it's now dying, that it's now dying, and there's, there's nothing that looks like growth there. Because if you and I don't grow, you know, you and I will die. And it's the same with any garden where the, grow, where the growth happens overnight and it's visible to the naked eye or whether it happens over a long period of time. The important thing is, is that we move forward and we grow, that we grow in the Lord and we allow the Lord to grow within us. And that, and that only happens by stepping out into the, into the unknown. That only happens by making sure we take care of our, our, individ, our individual relationship with the Lord or that we look out for our mates, that we move past the, the, the conversation about you know, how the footy went or how work was and we have the confidence to be, able to, to be able to go to the heart, to the soil and to try and work on the hard ground that we all have at times. Because the other result to that is if we don't grow, that if we don't allow, if we don't allow either ourselves to work on, our, on someone else or, or people to work in our own lives, we start to wither, we start to die. The soil becomes hard and arid and, and, good, and good for nothing. And quite often, it's like the houses you drive past that, have, that are abandoned, that have been neglected. And all of a sudden, it doesn't take much to, to run something down into ruin. You know, it's easier... It's easier to knock something down and tear something down than it is to build it back up again. To build something back up takes a lot of time and a lot of effort just to, to, get, thing, just to get things ready to roll. And that's not just in a garden, that's in all aspects of, of life and construction and you know, home improvements and all manner of things. It's easy to knock something down than it is to build it up again. You know, our relationships with God take work. They take blood, they take sweat, they take tears. No, when when we pulled the plant out of the, when we pulled the plant out that had root rot, there was a lot of tears from one of my girls. Likewise, in the beginning, when this one plant didn't grow, and and I talk about well, it's, it's dead, it's it's good for nothing. We're going to have to get rid of it. There was a lot of tears, and we tried everything to get it work to work. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it grew. All of a sudden, it thrived. Now, you and I are in a fortunate position where where we're surrounded by all the nutrients that we need. We're surrounded by all the people that we need to be able to thrive in our relationship with God, to be able to thrive individually as a family or also as a church. All it requires is a little bit of hard work for you and I. You know, some, of us, some of us might have it easy, easier than others, but we all, we all suffer the same fate. We all, we all at times have the same distractions, you know, the same barriers that come up in our life. But the, the important thing is, is that rather than allowing ourselves to die, that, that we look to grow. And that starts young men, just for your attention for a moment, by saying yes when you're asked to do something. You know, particularly, uh, you know, whether, it's, you know, going, whether it's outreaching or a meeting or moving chairs, it doesn't matter what it is, but have, have a mind to say yes and a move, and a move to grow. No matter, no matter the circumstances, you know, let, let, your, let yourself prepare your... Prepare you know your body to serve in, in whatever whatever format that takes 
And same, same with the sisters. Whatever we're asked to do, let us have a mind to grow. Let us have a mind to, to say, yes, Lord, today use me. Today allow me, allow me to grow. Because if we don't, if we don't have that mind of, of what next, if we don't have that mind of, of, of looking to allow the Lord to use us to change our circumstances, then we'll, we'll die on the vine. You know, as, it sa- as it said there in, in John 15, you know, that he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. You know, we want to we be a people that grow, that, that grow and bear fruit. We've seen people to get, get together and pray, Lord, use me. We want to see revival in the church. And not only have they prayed, they've gone out and done, and we're starting to see revival in the church. We've had people get together and go, Lord, we want to, we want to be used. They've got together, they've prayed, they've gone out, and they've seen God use them. And it's not just about preaching the gospel, but it's allowing God to change our circumstances. But first and foremost, having, allowing us to have a mind that God would change our circumstances. Because once we feel like we're the finished product, once we feel like there's nothing else we need to do, you know, that's, that's when we, we become the sluggard. That's when uh, the thorns come up and start to choke the life out of us. And that's, and, that's a, and that's a slow death. Or that's when we allow something into our hearts. The smallest of things that then takes over our life, you know, and by the time, and by the time we realise it's there, by the time we realise the problem's there, you know, it, it's too late. There, there's nothing else, brothers and sisters. Just in closing, there's a, we all have a, we all have a time to live. We all have a time to die. You know, unless the Lord tarries, everyone in this room will die. Everyone in this room will have ill health. Everyone in this room will experience hardship. But it's what we do in that hardship that counts the most. You know, do we wallow in self pity? Do we do we do we go? Well, woe, woe is me. We take our bat and our ball, and, and we and we go home. Or do we then start to tend to the ground? Do we start to prepare our hearts and look within first and allow the Lord to change it? In Isaiah fifty-eight, and just finishing here, we read: "The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in the sun-scorched land. He will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden." like a spring whose waters never fail. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. We are going to have a time of... Pr- oh, Pastor Paul. <laughs>